What if you could travel 1,125 kilometers in just 30 minutes or journey from New York to London in under an hour? This was the bold promise of the Hyperloop, a futuristic transportation system unveiled by Elon Musk in 2013. Using vacuum-sealed tubes, magnetic levitation, and supersonic speeds, the Hyperloop aimed to revolutionize travel, offering unparalleled speed, energy efficiency, and affordability. Musk's proposal suggested trips between major cities for as little as $20, sparking a wave of excitement. The concept quickly gained global traction, with companies like Virgin Hyperloop and Hyperloop TT securing millions in investments and governments exploring its potential. Routes to India, the UAE, and the US were announced with fanfare. Yet a decade later, the dream remains unfulfilled. Rising costs, unsolved technical hurdles, and stiff competition from established technologies like maglev trains left the Hyperloop as an unfulfilled promise. What caused this vision to collapse? Let's find out. This is Megalith. Please subscribe and never miss an update on the best mega projects. In August 2013, Elon Musk introduced an idea that promised to revolutionize transportation. In a 57-page white paper titled Hyperloop Alpha, he laid out a radical vision for traveling faster than a plane but with the efficiency of a train. Frustrated by California's high-speed rail project, plagued by delays and staggering costs, Musk proposed a revolutionary alternative. A low-pressure tube system where passenger pods would glide on air bearings powered by linear induction motors and magnetic levitation. The potential? Speeds of up to 1,220 km per hour. Faster than conventional trains and even commercial airliners. But could it really work? Musk believed so. Unlike traditional railways, the Hyperloop would be built on elevated pylons, reducing land acquisition costs and minimizing environmental disruption. A Los Angeles-San Francisco route, he argued, could be built for just $6 billion, a fraction of the $89 to $128 billion price tag of California's high-speed rail project. It was an audacious idea, a transportation system that was faster, cheaper, and more sustainable. And Musk wasn't the only one who saw the potential. Soon, startups like Virgin Hyperloop One, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, and Transpod jumped into the race, each with their own innovations. The goal? To turn science fiction into reality and redefine the future of travel as we know it. These companies envisioned a future where cities separated by hundreds or even thousands of kilometers could feel like next-door neighbors, fundamentally changing the way people traveled and connected. So what happened next? Did any of these companies manage to turn the Hyperloop dream into reality? The world was captivated by the promise of the Hyperloop. Early demonstrations offered a tantalizing glimpse of what seemed to be the future of transportation. In 2016, Virgin Hyperloop conducted its first open-air test in the Nevada desert. Although the pod reached only 216 km per hour, far from the projected 1,120 km per hour, it marked a critical proof of concept and sparked widespread excitement. The media buzz reached a fever pitch in 2020 when two Virgin Hyperloop executives, Josh Giegel and Sarah Lutchian, became the first humans to ride a Hyperloop pod. While the pod only reached 172 km per hour during the test, the milestone sent shockwaves through the tech world, solidifying the Hyperloop as a technological marvel in the making. Suddenly, the race was on. Startups around the globe jumped on board, forging partnerships with governments, universities, and private investors. Feasibility studies were launched in diverse locations from India and the UAE to Europe. Among the most promising was India's Mumbai Poon Corridor, with a planned journey time of only 25 minutes compared to the three-hour drive. Similar studies explored routes in Russia, Finland, Sweden, and Switzerland, all envisioning Hyperloop systems that could connect major metropolitan areas with an efficiency never seen before. The stakes were high, and investment poured in. Virgin Hyperloop alone secured $450 million in funding from high-profile backers like Richard Branson and Dubai Ports World. This financial injection allowed the company to purchase a 50-acre site in Nevada where it constructed the DevLoop test track, a 500-meter-long, 3.3-meter-wide tube that became the focal point of the Hyperloop's early testing phase. Other players in the field, such as Hyperloop TT and Transpod, also followed suit developing their own prototypes and designs, each adding their own innovations to the mix. The academic world wasn't far behind either. 
SpaceX, under Musk's leadership, hosted annual Hyperloop pod competitions from 2015 to 2019. These events invited engineering teams from universities worldwide to design and test small-scale models of Hyperloop pods. In some instances, speeds exceeded 320 km per hour, showcasing the system's immense potential and igniting the imaginations of the next generation of engineers. The vision of a high-speed, sustainable transportation network that could connect distant cities seemed almost unstoppable. With its sleek designs, media buzz, and futuristic renderings of pods and stations, the Hyperloop became a symbol of innovation. For a moment, it felt as if the Hyperloop could truly revolutionize transportation and usher in a new era of mobility. But as excitement over the groundbreaking Hyperloop concept grew, the reality beneath the surface told a different story. From the very start, Hyperloop projects faced significant financial hurdles. Despite raising hundreds of millions from private investors and venture capital, no Hyperloop company was able to establish a sustainable business model. Elon Musk's original estimate of $6 billion for the Los Angeles-San Francisco route quickly proved to be overly optimistic. Virgin Hyperloop's projected cost per kilometer soared to $100 million, far exceeding that of traditional high-speed rail. The immense costs of building the complex network of vacuum tubes, pylons, and pods, combined with the need for cutting-edge engineering and manufacturing, made the project even more expensive. Governments, initially intrigued by the futuristic technology, hesitated to commit public funds to such an unproven concept. While discussions with potential partners in India, the UAE, and Europe were explored, few of these negotiations resulted in tangible projects. As time passed, investors grew increasingly wary, especially as deadlines were missed and promised returns failed to materialize. Virgin Hyperloop, which had raised an impressive $450 million, eventually found itself struggling to pay its bills, let alone bring its ambitious promises to life. The technical challenges facing Hyperloop were just as daunting. One of the biggest obstacles was maintaining a vacuum over such long distances. The energy required to sustain low-pressure conditions in the tubes was far greater than originally anticipated, making the system less energy efficient and sustainable than initially promised. On top of that, the tubes had to withstand extreme temperature fluctuations, earthquakes, and various structural stresses. Elevated tubes on pylons, meant to reduce land acquisition costs, also created their own set of complications. To accommodate thermal shifts, expansion joints were required, but these added not only to maintenance costs, but also posed potential safety risks. Engineering tubes capable of enduring natural disasters like earthquakes and high winds only further complicated the project. And if these challenges weren't enough, the issue of hydrodynamic instability and floating tunnel designs added another layer of complexity. Conceptual tests revealed that mid-water floating tunnels suffered from unstable equilibrium. The forces from waves and currents posed significant risks, making the development of transoceanic hyperloop systems even more difficult. While the idea of the hyperloop sounded futuristic and luxurious, the reality for passengers was far less appealing. Imagine boarding a pod that prioritized aerodynamics over comfort. The interiors were cramped, small and enclosed, designed more for speed than for relaxation. With no windows, passengers had to rely on digital screens for entertainment and simulations of the outside world. But could this really be the future of transportation? Rapid acceleration and deceleration created a whole new set of challenges. For many, the constant start and stop motion made the experience uncomfortable and prolonged exposure could easily lead to motion sickness. Efforts were made to improve the design, adding greenery and wood textures to give the pod a more welcoming feel, but ultimately the overall experience wasn't something that could easily win over the general public. What about the hype? Despite its theoretical appeal, the Hyperloop struggled to make real-world headway. Initial feasibility studies in countries like India and the UAE generated excitement, but the lack of any full-scale operational system left many potential partners skeptical. Unlike high-speed rail, which had decades of proven reliability and efficiency, the Hyperloop remained, at best, an untested concept. Did the tests offer any hope? Virgin Hyperloop's test track in Nevada, considered the most advanced system at the time, achieved speeds far below expectations. In 2020, the test with human passengers reached just 172 km per hour. Similar to existing high-speed rail, but nowhere near the promised 1,120 km per hour. With results like that, the dream of the Hyperloop began to look more like an unrealistic fantasy than a revolutionary leap forward. 
In the face of this, the Hyperloop found itself up against fierce competition from established technologies. High-speed rail systems like Japan's Shinkansen and China's Shanghai Maglev had already demonstrated proven reliability, safety, and efficiency, offering speeds of up to 600 km per hour. While these trains weren't quite as fast as the Hyperloop's theoretical 1,120, they were operational, accessible, and trusted. Even Maglev trains, which share some technological similarities with the Hyperloop, didn't require the additional complexity of maintaining a vacuum. These trains proved more cost-effective and practical, with countries like South Korea and Saudi Arabia investing heavily in maglev technology instead. So when did the Hyperloop's dream truly come to an end? The tipping point came in 2023, when Virgin Hyperloop One made a significant move. It shut down its passenger division. This effectively marked the end of the Hyperloop as a viable transportation solution for people. Startups like Zilleros and Hyperloop TT pivoted to focus on cargo applications or drastically reduced their operations. Despite years of hype, substantial investment, and numerous tests, no Hyperloop prototype had come close to achieving the promised speeds. High-profile projects like the one in India, which had been touted as a potential breakthrough for the technology, never progressed beyond early proposals. So what led to the demise of Hyperloop? Was it a single failure, or were there deeper, unresolved issues at play? The dream of Hyperloop wasn't extinguished by one setback, but by the accumulation of insurmountable obstacles. Unresolved engineering challenges, ballooning costs, and a growing inability to demonstrate real-world feasibility. While the Hyperloop stalled, countries like China and Japan forged ahead with proven technologies, investing heavily in maglev trains. These trains continue to evolve, reaching speeds of up to 602 km per hour with well-documented safety and efficiency records. Meanwhile, South Korea and Saudi Arabia poured resources into expanding their high-speed rail networks, proving that sometimes innovation doesn't require reinventing the wheel. Europe, too, focused on refining and enhancing its existing rail systems with an emphasis on sustainability and accessibility. Rather than chasing untested concepts, governments and investors may find greater success by optimizing what's already proven to work. Expanding high-speed rail networks, integrating renewable energy into transit, and modernizing infrastructure offer immediate and tangible benefits, without the risk associated with unproven technology. But is the Hyperloop's legacy entirely negative? Far from it. While the technology itself may have faltered, its impact on the transportation industry is undeniable. It reignited conversations about sustainable transportation, pushed engineers to explore new possibilities, and inspired a global dialogue about the future of mobility. However, the lessons learned from Hyperloop's rise and fall point to one key conclusion. Transformative change is most effective when grounded in realism and supported by gradual advancements. It's not always about making giant leaps forward. Sometimes it's about taking steady steps that bring us closer to the future we envision. What do you think? Will Hyperloop become a reality soon, or is it just a dream? Let us know in the comments.